Hey there, my name's Kelly. I started this channel to help people like myself who are looking for a way to organize their finances, but they're not sure how to do it. Now, I use Quicken for all my transactions and bills. It has been a game changer. There are so many facets and ways to use Quicken to help save time. And that's my goal with this channel is to help others that want to get and stay organized. And Quicken is an excellent way to do that. Now, if you're anything like me, too much information at once is overwhelming and it's hard to remember. So we're going to start with the basics and we'll work our way up from there. Now I remember how overwhelming it was for me when I first started to use Quicken, so I get it. But like anything else, the more you use it, the more you'll get comfortable with it. So let's get right into it. For this first video, we're going to go over some of the columns that you're going to find when you download and start using Quicken. So when you first uh, open Quicken, this is what the main screen is going to look like. One thing I wanted to mention too is your screen might look different than mine. It's totally customizable as far as the tabs, and so this is how I have mine set up, but yours may look completely different depending on how you set yours up with your tabs. So you'll see several columns, and at the top here it says all transactions. That includes everything that you add in here. So starting over here on the left, all transactions, banking. That will include your checking savings account and all credit cards that you want to add in here to keep track of. The next column over is the date column, which is really nice because it keeps it in order. The next column over is the account column. So again, that'll be your checking account, savings account, credit cards, however many you have in there. This will be the account that you're looking at to see what's being paid. This column over here is the check number column that you can add a particular check number that you want to keep track of. And then the column over here is the payee column that would include all your stores that you go to, uh, that you have a receipt for that'll be in here, any payees for bills. So as an example, here's Toyota. And then underneath it, here's Dominion Energy. Here's Quickie Mart. It's endless as far as how many uh, you can put in here. It's, it's all up to you what you want to keep track of. The next column over is the memo column, which is really, really nice because if you want to keep a memo for yourself that you need to remember something, you just pop it in there you'll have it to look at as a reference. Then the next column over is your category column. I really like this column because you can get as detailed as you want, or if you don't want to be detailed, you don't have to, but it's really nice to keep track of. An example here, shopping and then clothing. Now you can get even more detailed with that, even subcategories, which we'll get into a little bit later, but it's nice to keep track of the categories to see where your money is going. Here's the tag column, and what's nice about this is you can post something under here that you may want to reference for business purposes. My husband and I own rental properties, so when we purchase something for a unit and we need to know which one that is, we'll tag it and then we have that in there to look at for reference. So that's a nice tool feature of the tag column. The column here, the paper clip, if you want to add a receipt in here for business purposes or whatever the case may be, or you just want to keep track of something for future reference or to look at later, that's what this little paper clip is for. You can scan and attach receipts and then those will be in there. You'll click on the little paper clip and you'll be able to see it. The next column over is the payment column. And here you'll see the amounts, whatever you're paying, you'll see that here. And then this column over here is your cleared and reconciled when you're ready to clear a transaction or reconcile it, that's what this is for. We'll talk about that more as well. The next column is the deposit column. It's nice because you can see all the amounts here right in one screen, which is really nice. The amount column, here you'll see either withdrawals or payments. And again, a running total makes it really nice to look at everything right here on one screen. And then your last column here is the total amount. So up here in the search box, this is nice because if you're doing a bunch of transactions for whatever reason, you're trying to find something and you can't see it, you can go up here to the search box and you can either type in the amount or you can type in the payee, whatever you want to do for quick reference. Here I just did Quickie Mart 
just as an example, if I start typing in quick and came right up, if that's what you were looking for, that is a really nice feature, helps speed things up a little bit. And then the filters here, you can hide those if you wish. This is all up to you, how you want to set it up, how clean you want it to look. So you would just click on the little filters here, and you notice it says reset and hide filters, so you can just do that. If you want them to show back up, you just click on it again. So however you want to set this up, if you want to see the filters, that's totally fine. If you want to hide them, that's what that's there for. There are some other tabs up here that we'll get into later that are more detailed uh, of what you can do with Quicken. So again, this is what the main screen looks like. It is really nice, like I said, to keep track of everything and have everything nice and clean and organized. And that's what the point of this is, is to show Quicken and how to use it because there's so many things that you can do with it. If there's any suggestions that anyone has that they would like to know about, please comment and we'll get to those in a future video. So for now, I just wanted to show the basics on the main screen and in our next video we'll get into something else on here in one of these columns. And I hope somebody gets something out of this, how to use Quicken. If you do, please let me know, please like and subscribe to the channel. So until next time.